The modern Ninja Gaiden trilogy saw a lot of revising over the last two decades, and with the revisions came division among fans as well as confusion and misinformation among the titles as time has gone on. This video will serve as a comprehensive look at every version of the games in the modern Ninja Gaiden trilogy and how they evolved over time. We're going to be covering everything from content to gameplay to visuals, performance, and even input latency for a few platforms. The Ninja Gaiden games are known for their difficulty as action games. They're fast paced and punishing if you can't keep up. These are games where their difficulty options change things such as the enemies you'll have to fight within encounters. And I've noticed that this has led to some common misconceptions about the differences between versions that are actually comparing one game's hard mode to another's normal mode. We'll do our best here to keep difficulty in mind, but we won't be covering the difficulty changes in depth. Think of this video as an introductory 101, comprehensive and blanket coverage of the differences among these games. The difficulty changes are basically on a whole other level and possibly outside the realm of whether you're simply looking to play the games at all. Like for example, while this video is already over 26 minutes long, this is a spreadsheet detailing a ton of in-depth differences between Ninja Gaiden Black and Sigma. And if you made this, please let me know, I only found it linked uncredited in a Reddit thread, and I can't find a spreadsheet by reverse searching an image, but doing a video to this level would be significantly longer and lose focus. If you like this video, be sure to help the algorithm like the video too. A lot of work went into this one and I'm hoping this video serves as a one-stop guide to these games that clears up misinformation and presents the info in a straightforward manner. And hopefully, by the end, you can get an idea of which versions of these games you'd like to play, and even understand why the titles are so divisive. And normally I try to stick to the base games for these videos, but updates and DLC are integral to these games. First, we'll need to talk about 2004 Ninja Gaiden's Master Ninja Tournament, and then talk about the game's free DLC known as the Hurricane Packs. Master Ninja Tournament was an exclusive event to the original release. After connecting to Xbox Live, you'd do a playthrough of the game, and your Karma score would be submitted. In the end, those with the highest scores got to compete at Tokyo Game Show 2004. They did three of these tournaments in-game. The first was for the base game, the second was was for the Hurricane Pack 1 DLC, and the last was for the Hurricane Pack 2 DLC. The first Hurricane Pack was basically a new difficulty mode that was only playable through the tournament, but it made a handful of general balance adjustments too, such as nerfing the Debilaharo Greatsword and letting you charge ET and UT or Essence Technique or Ultimate Technique without Essence. It also added third person camera control, two new costumes, the Lunar Staff, and the infamous Intercept Technique. Technique. However, the bulk of its changes are only experienced through the Master Ninja Tournament 2. When you start up the second Master Ninja Tournament, you'll find that enemies have been added and upgraded all throughout the game. Like in the first chapter, every ninja was upgraded up a tier, the prices in the shop were changed, and you would start off with more of your arsenal to accommodate. The second pack featured Eternal Legend, where you fought through waves of enemies and had to save Rachel, and so that's what you did for the third tournament. Now Xbox Live for the original Xbox shut down in 2010, so you can't download the Hurricane Packs anymore by conventional means or start up a playthrough to experience Hurricane Pack 1's tournament. Now exclusive in this version was that you could unlock the Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, a Super Nintendo remaster of the NES games. This version can be played on an Xbox 360 and will have more consistent frame rates, which is nice because when any of the Ninja Gaiden games lag or drop frame rates, they will slow down. However, there are some small issues. The pre-rendered cutscenes are choppy and there are some mild visual anomalies. Ninja Gaiden Black is an updated version of the original game that includes the DLC, except for the intercept technique. And in addition to the DLC, Black also added smoke bombs, two new costumes, a new main menu opening, and a trailer for Dead or Alive 4. The game also added a new mission mode with 50 missions where you face various challenges. This mode includes Eternal Legend and the challenge fought at the Master Ninja Tournament Finals. 
Two new difficulty options were added. Ninja Dog difficulty would make the game easier if you failed three times on the first mission, and then Master Ninja difficulty was an even harder difficulty that would also significantly limit how many items you could carry. Aside from the intercept technique being cut, other cuts include the Armlet of Tranquility accessory that was also deemed overpowered, New Game Plus since it'd be redundant now that the hard difficulty gives you more of your arsenal, the Ninja of the Future costume, and the Super Nintendo Trilogy was replaced by the arcade game. Ninja Gaiden Black's hard mode builds off of Hurricane Pack 1's Master Ninja Tournament, so all of those changes are present there, and this means that the game's default difficulties are largely the same outside of general changes I've mentioned like weapon rebalancing. Additionally, the Kitetsu Sword no longer drains your HP, text boxes were removed, and there's new cutscenes like the opening of the first mission, and Ayane handing you the bow. Not only is Ninja Gaiden Black backwards compatible on Xbox 360, but it also works on Xbox One and series as well. If you play Ninja Gaiden Black on Xbox 360, you'll still see the same issues as the original version though. Additionally, the arcade game doesn't work either, but all of these issues are fixed on Xbox One and series. And just like the original, there was some slowdown on original hardware, but on Xbox 360 the performance is stable. And while the 360 keeps the game's native resolution, Xbox One S renders the game at 960p, Series S does 1440p, and Xbox One X and Series X render at 4K. Ninja Gaiden Sigma was an overhaul of Ninja Gaiden Black made for the PS3 and handled by a different director. We'll see that Sigma is a more streamlined experience where aspects of the chapters outside of combat were toned down. Sigma added a new weapon, the Dragon's Claw and Tiger Fang Dual Katanas. New chapters in the story where you play as Rachel, plus five more missions in the mission mode including her. And the game received survival mode through DLC, where you fought off waves of enemies. Some of the music was changed in Sigma as well, so here's a sample. The opening intro, the ability to watch back cutscenes, the Xbox prototype easter egg, the Master Ninja Tournament final round mission, and the arcade game were all removed. Rachel received hairstyle options, but Ryu lost his red muffler and DOA throwback costumes. Ninja Gaiden Sigma features literally hundreds of changes between levels, weapons, enemies, and visuals. These games are known for their difficulty, so the value of some changes depends on who you ask, as some changes make the game easier in different ways. Let's run through some examples of changes. Levels have more save points and shops, explosives are sprinkled all throughout them, some puzzle segments were removed entirely, backtracking was trimmed down a bit, you can shoot arrows mid-air, you'll automatically stand on water where before you had to tap A over the surface, and you don't start with more of your arsenal on harder difficulties anymore. Some techniques and weapons were shuffled around in their placement, so like Flying Swallow is a scroll now in the first chapter, and usable without upgrading the sword, and to accommodate for that, more enemies can block it. Lunar also was moved from Chapter 2 to Chapter 4. There are generally more enemies and enemy variety in any given fight in Sigma, as well as more fights all throughout the game. Chapter 2 was extended a bit with a fruitless fight with Doku, and at the end of Chapter 4 you'll fight some motorcycle dudes, where previously you didn't fight anything. You can use items with the D-pad, you can shake the DualShock 3 controller to power up your Ninpo, Golden Scarabs are turned in automatically, the camera controls were made more conventional while retaining the design choice that enemies do their best to not hit you from off-screen, the combo counter is hidden with the Karma display, time bonuses for Karma were made much more strict, and you can't pick costumes when loading saves anymore, you have to pick them when starting a new game. 
Sigma sees a massive graphical overhaul that's sought to take advantage of the PS3 hardware. There's more blood, higher resolution textures, higher poly models, updated UI, additional animations, and visual effects like more foliage that accompany vastly overhauled environments. And while Sigma is at 720p at a consistent 60fps on PS3, it does suffer from occasional screen tearing. Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus for the PS Vita was the last major update to the game. Sigma Plus adds one extra costume for Ryu and two extra costumes for Rachel as well as more hairstyles and glasses for her. Sigma Plus also reintroduces the mission mode as Ninja Trials mode, which reorganizes the missions as they were back in black. The most significant changes to Sigma Plus are that costumes have stat attributes now, and the addition of enhancements, which are basically secondary accessories that can stack with accessories. Otherwise, there's Vita exclusive features that include touching the touchscreen to go into first person and aim with the bow, using gyroscope controls to look around, and the back touchpad can be used to boost Ninpo. Also, the interact button was moved from square to circle for some reason. Ninja Dog difficulty was removed and replaced with Hero Mode. Hero Mode hands you a technique that kicks in when you're close to death. You'll automatically start blocking everything and have infinite info for a while. Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus runs at 544p compared to the PS3's 720p and is capped at 30fps though it is at least a stable 30 FPS, and also pre-rendered cutscenes are cropped to 16x9 without the option to toggle 4x3 anymore, though that might have to do with how some previous in-game cutscenes are now pre-rendered. At the end of the day, you'll likely be making a choice between Black or Sigma. The changes made in Sigma aren't necessarily the most offensive possible changes. You can think of Sigma as a different flavor of the first game. You can't really go wrong with either, and people have their preferences among the two based on aspects I've mentioned. So if any of those changes resonate with you, Sigma may be your choice, but otherwise, if the changes put you off, you can look towards Black. In terms of the game's performance, Ninja Gaiden 2 shows off signs of being rushed, which ultimately results in some poor performance and some questionable balance. However, the title was ambitious and tried to take advantage of the more powerful hardware of the Xbox 360 by throwing many more enemies at you and utilizing alpha layers for blood. While the game launched with alternative costume colors, there weren't any different costumes or a mission mode unless you bought DLC. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 had to heavily rebuild the engine of Ninja Gaiden 2 to be able to run on the PS3, and several compromises had to be made. Once again, Sigma 2 was handled by a different director. Rachel, Ayane, and Momiji each have their own chapters in the story. Enma's Fang, a greatsword was added, chapter challenges were added where you had karma scoring, and three new costumes for Ryu were added along with one DLC costume for each character. Mission mode was reworked into online co-op tag missions. Unfortunately though, the netcode was mediocre, and it definitely didn't help that these missions involved more enemies on screen, so they're unstable and slowed down on top of the lag but you could still play the missions with AI. In terms of cut content, the Blade of the Archfiend, Ryu's Windmill and Incendiary Shuriken, Underwater Combat, the Tessa Valor where you had an on-the-spot survival fight in an area were cut, New Game Plus, Costume Recolors, and two of the original version's DLC outfits were all removed. The most significant gameplay change in Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 is the massive reduction in the number of enemies, blood, and limbs which despawn almost immediately now. To compensate for less enemies at once, enemies come at you in smaller waves, have more health, and grabs on you do more damage. More encounters were added in some places, as well as some were removed too. This ultimately results in a different flowing gameplay. Let's run through some examples of tweaks made in Sigma 2. Your character will always look in the direction you have to go to progress, R1 will also show you which way you have to go as well, health upgrade consumables will be used immediately, and you can use the gyroscope controls to control jiggle physics. All doors are automatically open so you don't need to find keys or kick them open anymore, and a lot of chests are now just essence. 
there are five new bosses and two of those replace older ones, while other bosses were mechanically overhauled. You don't purchase weapon upgrades anymore, the upgrades are instead obtained free one at a time at certain shops. So as a result, you'll have a lot of saved essence. All ranged weapons now have unlimited ammo and were rebalanced to accommodate. You can equip shuriken at the same time as the bow as well, and because of this, the bow is now controlled with L2 and R2 as opposed to circle and the analog stick, and it doesn't charge an ultimate technique anymore. Interact was moved from R1 to circle as well. So, in turn for less enemies and blood, lighting was overhauled for the hardware, bloom was added, and sometimes the day of time and levels were changed. Many textures were redone and cutscene models were improved. The 360 version of the game only ran up to 585p and struggled to maintain 60fps with constant screen tearing and slowdown. On PS3, however, given the concessions that were made, the game runs at 720p, though it still struggles to maintain 60fps and has screen tearing as well. This isn't the end of the story, however, because the original game is backwards compatible on Xbox One and series, meaning you can play Ninja Gaiden 2 with no screen tearing and enjoy a more consistent frame rate. So much so that your replays may be desynced if they came from the 360 version. On Xbox One S, the game is still 585p, but is a more stable frame rate. On Xbox One X, the game is 1755p, Xbox Series S is 1440p, and Xbox Series X is 4K, all locked at 60fps. I had also read that people believe Sigma 2 suffers from more input lag than you'd find on Xbox. So I tested the input latency for myself. However, 120 FPS isn't high enough to get precise measurements and I can't do any higher right now. However, we don't need any higher to see that yes, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on PS3 has more input lag than Ninja Gaiden 2 does on Xbox. Once again, Sigma 2 was ported over to the Vita known as Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 Plus. Sigma 2 Plus introduces the hero difficulty again, a new costume for everyone with one DLC costume for Ayane, Rachel, and Momiji, gyroscope aiming but no gyroscope jiggle physics anymore, ninja race mode, and turbo mode for tag missions, which you can't play online anymore, so you must do them with the AI. Interestingly, an option for the gore was also added. It's still toned down compared to the original, but it doesn't have any performance impact at all. Now, most cutscenes in Sigma 2 Plus are pre-rendered now, and once again there is a 30 FPS cap, which the game struggles a lot to maintain, so it suffers from severe slowdown. Ninja Gaiden 2 and Sigma 2 both have their divisive flaws and issues, although Sigma 2 has a much more negative stigma among fans because of its reduced enemy count and afterthought rebalancing around that. Accompanied by the other changed aspects, Sigma 2 simply takes different design philosophies compared to the first, and the result is strong preferences for one version over the other. Ninja Gaiden 3, handled by the head of Sigma and Sigma 2, faced a lot of criticism about how much it deviated from the previous entries in both its tone and in gameplay. From no save statues, only one weapon in the story in the base game, no healing items, shopping, and ultimate techniques can only be done after killing a certain number of enemies, to total removal of gore and dismemberment, passive enemies that cower in fear, and an abundance of quick time events. While there were no costumes for Ryu, the game had an online component that featured PvP and co-op ninja trials, which offers customization for the online gameplay. Take note though that if you buy the game you you'll have to pay for the online pass that came with new copies of the game to play with anyone. Nobody is probably playing online either. The game had free updates that added the Falcon Talons, Eclipse Scythe, more clan battle stages, and raised the level cap for multiplayer. Additionally, the game had three DLC packs. Altogether, the three DLC packs added the Metal Claws, Great Scythe, 42 ninja trials, 30 customization pieces, and ultimate ninja difficulty. Additionally, only on PS3, Ninja Gaiden 3 supports the PlayStation Move. 
The support is pretty mediocre and you can only use it on hero difficulty, but the support is there. Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge is an updated port that responds to many of the original game's criticisms and was made for the Wii U and released later for the 360 and PS3. On top of including all of the previous DLC, Razor's Edge features multiple new weapons including dual katanas, lunar, and kusari gama, reintroduces collectibles along with Tessa Valor, adds costumes for Ryu with one DLC costume per character, chapter challenge mode, additional ninja trials, a chapter in the story starring Ayane, and Momiji and DOA's Kasumi are playable in Ninja Trials and Chapter Challenge. The online pass requirement was also dropped from the Wii U version, but on PS3 and 360 you will still need to buy the online pass for Razor's Edge if you buy it used, or digitally. Razor's Edge makes a lot of changes to every aspect of gameplay, and it means weapons, techniques, mechanics are all revamped. Story cutscenes through the beginning of the game that players found tonally confusing were cut like Ryu cutting someone from first person and staring a dude down while pleading for their life. So enemies have gone from yelling to instead saying Bosses have health bars now, enemy AI are far more aggressive, and they won't hesitate to attack you as a group. Not only does dismemberment return, but human enemies will once again attack you when they've lost limbs and attempt to blow you up. Quicktime events are reduced significantly, move lists have names now, kunai climbing was made easier and the number of areas where you have to do it was reduced, rope climbing was just straight up removed, walkie talking segments are cut down, different types of ninpo are introduced with different effects and meter lengths, steel on bone is done with just the heavy attack button now instead of mashing, and flying swallow simply decapitates again instead of doing the zoomed in animation. Upgrades return where you can spend karma to upgrade your health, weapons, and info, as well as buy more costumes and techniques. Obliteration techniques work like they did before on low health and dismembered enemies again, and ultimate techniques can be manually charged again, with three levels to do it. On top of that though, the way ultimate techniques worked in the original version was reworked into a new gameplay mechanic called Bloody Rage. So now, the more kills you have in a fight, the more you'll multiply your karma. But at a certain point, you can then activate the instant ultimate techniques like before and warp to your enemies, but you will reset the multiplier on your karma. Being a launch title for the Wii U, the game had gamepad integration. You could use the gamepad to change weapons without pausing, cast ninpo, and see your move lists. Visually, the game's close to identical between all three platforms, regardless of version, though Razor's Edge did make subtle changes throughout. For example, we'll see effects like rain are more prominent when in stealth Ryu turns invisible, and Ayane's face was updated to her DOA 5 appearance. Performance-wise, every version does struggle with frame rate and slowdown to some degree, though I do believe the Wii U struggles a smidge more. Every version also uses dynamic resolution in the same manner, dropping from 720p to 576p when needed. The original version of 3 had screen tearing on 360 and PS3, and more so on 360. Razor's Edge, however, has no screen tearing on Wii U or on 360. Lastly, the original version of 3 can't be played on Xbox One or Series, but Razor's Edge can. So on Xbox One and Series, you'll find performance is much more stable compared to 360, PS3, PS3 or Wii U. And going back to our input lag tests, not only did Razor's Edge on Wii U have a bit more input lag than on 360, but both versions of 3 on PS3 have significantly more input lag, surprising probably nobody that has played either version on PS3. The choice between Vanilla 3 and Razor's Edge seems to be a lot more clear cut if you've enjoyed the series so far. Outside of the odd story beats, nothing was really cut. To briefly cover game design philosophy here, one of the appeals of the challenge in these games is that things like or are satisfying after overcoming an obstacle, but the original version of 3 was designed around giving you these previously satisfying elements in absurd abundance for very little effort, which ended up devaluing them. Razor's Edge returns this simple design philosophy where you earn that satisfying Ninja Gaiden Master Collection contains ports of Sigma Plus, Sigma 2 Plus, and Razor's Edge. While the games themselves are simply labeled as Sigma and Sigma 2, they include every change, mode, and costume from the Plus versions, except for the optional gore and turbo mode in 2. 
We're receiving these versions as well because reportedly the source code for Ninja Gaiden Black and Ninja Gaiden 2 were lost, leaving us with the Sigma versions to uphold. UI elements in Sigma and Sigma 2 are much higher resolution than they've ever been. I think that's worth mentioning since with all the backwards compatibility, that doesn't correct the UI elements that were simply upscaled with bilinear filtering. So it's nice to have a full upscaling job for stuff like the UI and pre-rendered cutscenes done by Koei Tecmo themselves. In the first game, the story opening was added back in. However, for some reason, Ayane's narration for kunai tutorials were removed. Aiming also now works as it did in 2 and 3, where you must hold the left trigger first. And in 2 and 3, all online multiplayer elements were removed. In 2, Ninja Trials can only be done with an AI partner like they were on the Vita, but you can swap between the characters using the D-pad now. In 3, you do them alone, and to compensate, enemies have less health. 3's Infinite Karma glitch was also fixed. And now it's time for the all-encompassing visual comparison. All three games use dynamic resolution scaling, so the Switch runs all three games up to 720p and up to 60fps, both docked and undocked. Let's talk about the Switch version for a moment though. Sigma's default video settings are just completely wrong. Using the PC version as a base, this was the closest that I could get the Switch version to looking correct. Other than that, while the Switch version of Sigma is stable, Sigma 2 and Razor Z struggle to a degree. They're about on par with the performance of their original versions, sometimes better, sometimes worse. But at the very least, no version of the Master Collection has screen tearing. Sigma 2 looks the closest to its other console counterparts than the other games, though Razor's Edge clearly had to make a ton of compromises to run as well as it does on the hardware, as we can see when we compare it. Then there aren't nearly as many compromises on PlayStation or Xbox. PS4 and Xbox One S run all three games up to 1080p and up to 60fps. PS4 Pro, PS5, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S, and Xbox Series X can run the games up to 4K and up to 60fps. The Master Collection versions also load much faster than their original counterparts. This is barring the Xbox One and Series backwards compatibility though, which is about on par with the low times of the Master Collection versions. On PC, all three games launched without 1440p support or any graphics options. Two updates later and this has been remedied though. Of course, there's no arbitrary resolution support or any higher FPS support than 60. There's also no mouse and keyboard support whatsoever. People have run into some small glitches too that I think will be fixed, but like in Sigma 2, in Chapter 9, it's missing its audio chatter background noise. Something seems to be different with the textures too on the PC version, and I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but it stands out when we compare. And lastly, I want to end on input lag notes. Since my testing isn't precise enough, I can't make a substantial claim, but I think something may be off with the Xbox Master Collection versions. Nothing is as bad as the PS3 versions of 2 and 3, of course, but it was an outlier in my testing. And if anyone more capable were to take a look at the input lag on these games, I think it would be a very interesting video. But other than that, I hope by now you've got an idea of what separates the modern Ninja Gaiden versions, and whether you're looking to play the versions generally held in a higher regard, or looking to play what are the more accessible versions without an Xbox. And I hope this video has cleared up a lot of information regarding these games. And at the end of the day, there is no wrong way to play these games so long as you enjoy them. Thanks for watching guys, if you're interested I keep active on Twitter and have a Patreon if you'd like to help support these videos. Next we'll be going back to JRPGs and covering the first Final Fantasy, so stay tuned.